Hello everyone, my name is Betül Durak and today I will be talking about uh, our work on improving the efficiency of AES protocols in multi-party computation. It's a joint work with my co-author Jorge Guajardo, we both are from uh, Bosch North America Research. Let me start with the basic uh, settings, general settings uh, of uh, the, the, our work, which is secure multi-party computation. It is introduced in the fundamental work of Yao in 1982. And since then, over the 40 years, it has made significant progress to become more and more efficient. Okay. Uh, the basic idea of MPC is that there are a group of parties who are mutually distrusting. Nevertheless, they would like to cooperate on computing a function on their private input without uh, disclosing them. In general, MPC may use different techniques to provide the privacy of the input, but for this talk, we will focus on uh, MPC protocols which are secret sharing based. More specifically, we will work with speeds for basic instructions such as multiplication and addition. Speeds uh, is secure against malicious adversaries where the adversaries may deviate from the protocol arbitrarily to sabotage the computation or to learn some secret uh, information about the input. Speeds also follows an offline online paradigm where the actual MPC computations happen in the online phase with the help from the offline phase by generating where, where, the, where some random uh, data is generated. And it will become more clear in the following slides what that means. Finally, uh, we work with MP Speeds framework uh, to implement our designs where we use the new techniques to implement AES. And uh, we, our results have shown that uh, our implementation is more than three times faster than the prior work. One application of um, a yes evaluation in MPC is the virtual hardware security modules, HSMs in short. An HSM is a piece of hardware which is used mostly by enterprises to generate secret keys and store them uh, in a secure manner. And these keys are used to do some basic cryptographic operations such as encryption, decryption, authentication, and nothing more complicated than that. Uh, however, there are some disadvantages of the secure hardware uh, hardwares. The first disadvantage is that they don't scale well. It's not easy to deploy because they are very expensive uh, piece of hardware. And in order to provide security, every computing platform needs to have them, physically have them. And it's not easy to scale in real world. And uh, uh, in case of vulnerabilities in the hardware, it is uh, very difficult and very slow to patch the problems as opposed problems in the hardware as opposed to software solutions, right? So the same functionality of HSM is uh, simulated through an uh, MPC setting where the secret key is secret shared among multiple participants in a secure manner and uh, all the functions such as encryption and decryption is computed through are computed through uh, MPC. This brings us to the AES block cipher because for symmetric key in symmetric key primitives, AES is widely used and uh, one of the very famous block cipher, which is as NIST standard, and it has been shown as very strong by uh, continuous cryptanalysis over 20 years. And more importantly, a yes is very efficient to, to, to encrypt maybe millions of uh, blocks of data, it, it can be used. And it's a key permutation which operates on 128 bits of block to generate a, a ciphertext of same size. Okay. Um, However, in practice, the message doesn't have one block, uh, which is 128 bits, it uh, may be arbitrary length. And for that, a mode of operation is used to encrypt uh, the data. Uh, most famous and widely used mode of operation is the counter mode because it enables parallelism. The basic idea of counter mode is that it takes uh, the secret key of AES and it generates a key stream 
by using a public counter, which is incremented for each block encryption. And the plain text, the pieces of plain text of the data is encrypted by XOR to the output of this encryption of the counters to generate the ciphertext. And it makes counter mode inverse free because to decrypt only the, uh, to, to swap to uh, plain text and ciphertext is enough without inverting the uh, AES uh, block computation of AES on the counter. And it will be clear why I am talking about this and why it is important for us, because our computations, which are different than the previous uh, computation AES evaluations, uh, we would like it to be compatible with the counter mode. Okay. Um, AES, when we look at the design of AES, we observe uh, several rounds. And among these several rounds, uh, the, the, they repeat some number of, some uh, layers of operations. And uh, not all the layers of operations are important for us. Only one layer, which is the sub-bytes layer, which is the only nonlinear layer is important for us to know and uh, to look very carefully, very closely. It, uh, it, is, it uses 16 permutation boxes called S boxes to operate uh, on one byte and it outputs another byte. And therefore we need 16 S boxes per round. And all the S boxes are computing the same thing. Namely, they take an input byte and they make operations by byte level or bit level operations to output the uh, output one byte. And this switch between the byte representation and bit representation makes this computer SPAX computations very costly for MPC operations. And moreover, these SPAXs are repeated 160 times. And it's very crucial for a designer to implement it in a very uh, efficient way to make MPC computations faster. So let's take a look at the, the step-by-step -step computations of a function in MPC first, before getting into the details of AES, AES evaluation. Uh, I will follow a offline online paradigm because we will work with speeds which follows this paradigm. The first thing the designer needs to do is to decide how to implement the functionality. So it's the same uh, functionality, suppose an encryption can be provided by different means, right? So we need to buy different uh, techniques. So we need to decide, uh, designer needs to decide how to, how to implement uh, the, the function. The second step is to go to the pre-processing phase, meaning the offline phase, uh, to prepare some auxiliary data to use in the online phase. Even though uh, pre-processing phase runs uh, as input independent, meaning that it doesn't require, it, it's not uh, necessary to know the input of the functions to be evaluated to generate this auxiliary data. It is important to know what, uh, how many number of operations or how much uh, auxiliary data is, is required to make the computations. And this phase is also known as a generation of the correlated randomness. Uh, usually, the pre-processing phase or the offline phase happens way earlier than the online computations because they, because they use uh, more costly cryptographic primitives such as homomorphic encryption. And therefore, whenever they are run, they need to be uh, communicating all the auxiliary data which is computed to the online computing platforms where the actual MPC computations will happen. And this data will be communicated and stored in the online participants. And this requires, uh, this, this, this becomes costly if the storage becomes too much. So uh, as a designer, we would like to have as little storage uh, overhead as possible for the, to do the computations. And on the uh, last step, this auxiliary data which is stored is used during the computations to finish the computations. And the way to use it is to mask the secret values. And these masked values are communicated, are broadcasted. So another costly part of MPC becomes the communication part uh, of uh, the masked values. 
and therefore the designer also would like to optimize the uh, communication cost to make efficient online computations. The, as an example of uh, expensive and cheap operations, let me give uh, you some, uh, some instructions, such as secret by secret multiplication, which requires both the storage from the pre-processing phase and the communication uh, during the online phase. And similarly, bit decomposition on secret values is also expensive for the same reason. And uh, cheap operations, they mean that they can be run locally uh, without requiring any communication or any storage. And the example of such operations are any additions between any type of uh, value, secret or public, and multiplications between a secret value and a public value. Okay, so even though these operations are cheap, of course, having a faster uh, computationally faster methods or little cheap operations also improves the performance. So let me start with our contributions at a high level. What, uh, what we did, we, we evaluated uh, uh, AES computation in, the, in MPC, but we were not the first one uh, to do that. Probably we won't be the last ones either. So there were lots of previous works, but we will focus on only one of them, which is Damgard et al from 2012. And uh, this paper uh, actually came after the SPEEDS paper because uh, they used the SPEEDS protocols with the MPSPEEDS framework to benchmark the uh, yes, uh, evaluations, which is most of the time the first thing an MPC protocol does because uh, MPC, MPC protocol does because it's such an important uh, uh, functionality to have. And uh, this paper, I'm glad it all used inverse SPACS computations where there are uh, five steps. What uh, I would like to uh, emphasize here is that the, the among five operations, there are three expensive operations which are mark, marked as red and uh, two cheap operations which are marked uh, with green. And in this work, instead of computing the forward SPACs, we would like to focus on computing an inverse SPAX because of three reasons. The first reason is that the inverse SPAX is as secure as forward SPAX. And uh, as also written in the AES specification. And the second reason is that it uses less number of operations. Instead, uh, there is one less uh, operation for the expensive operations. It is the bit decomposition, one less bit, less bit decomposition. And it may uh, have a very big uh, improvement in the performance. It's uh, because it will be repeated 160 times. And uh, finally, the advantage of inverse SPAX is that the linear operations which are in defined in step, which defines step two and three are back-to-back -back operations, which can be merged uh, as I will show in the following slides, okay? But this only, this only brings us some uh, inverse SPACS computations when we merge the second and third step only, uh, only uh, brings us some computational uh, advantage. We would like to go further to tweak the pre-processing phase to have uh, better uh, storage, meaning less storage than the previous work and use less communication during the online phase in order to run faster protocols, online protocols, okay? And uh, finally, we, as we said, we needed to tweak the counter mode in order to enable parallelism. And it is a very uh, simple tweak that uh, we will use to, to adapt it. And uh, let, me, let me continue with the, with the more details of, the, of, of our contributions. The first uh, contribution to implement inverse SPACs where we merge the, the linear operations all together. So how that works. The inverse SPACs, which takes a byte and outputs another byte, uh, the first step to do that is to apply a bit decomposition. And uh, I would like to pause a bit here to clarify a few things. The first of all, first thing is that I will abuse the notations and I will not use the angle bracket for all the uh, authenticated secret values, okay? Even though the bits of X, uh, which is represented at XI is, uh, is also authenticated secret, 
I don't show it with angle bracket because of the space problem. And the second thing is that um, uh, it is even though the protocols will run in GF2 to the 40 because of the statistical security, I will only uh, show what we did with GF2 to the 8 in order to simplify the, the ideas. The details are maybe more complicated, and uh, I will just use GF2 to 8 to simplify, simplify uh, the techniques that we used. And finally, bit decomposition is an expensive operation in uh, MPC because of the MEC computations. It requires some verifications of the computations by using information theoretically in MEC, specifically speeds uses that, and it costs to operate the bit decomposition, okay? Having said that, we can go to the second step, which is computing an affine function. And by the linearity of the uh, function L, the bit xi can be taken out and all the L function is applied to the basis, which is publicly available. And since it's an affine function, a, public, a constant is added after the addition. And uh, finally, the step three is the squaring step where the squaring of the L of BIs and the CIs are uh, done without touching anything about the input bit, uh, uh, the, the bit decomposed uh, value XI, because XI square will be XI in a finite field of characteristic two. Okay, and this is true for all the powers of power uh, or powers of powers of two, which we need to compute. And uh, all this means is that uh, the operations that I show you here, which are the linear functions applied to the basis and the constant with some uh, squaring operations, they can be computed once for all input uh, x or input byte x. And if this uh, computations, the SBAX computation is repeated 160 times, they will be reused 160 times. If it is used by a million times, it will be reused 1 million times. And therefore it provides a computational uh, efficiency to merge them. And, and uh, this provides the first efficiency in our, in our protocol. However, this was not enough, as I said, if you wanted to, to continue further tweaking the pre-processing phase and um, uh, offline phase uh, to have less communication complexities to, uh, to do in the online phase. For that, I need to uh, explain the idea of the secure multiplication and the pre-processing uh, because we will do six multiplications in the inverse SPAX computations, just like in the forward SPAX computations. And this observation comes from the previous work, Damgard et al., because uh, the inverse of a byte is essentially a power of 254 in GF2 to the 8. And this power can be computed with six multiplication of uh, a byte uh, raised to the power of uh, raised to the powers of powers of two. Okay, and let's look at now the secret uh, secret by secret multiplication because this is essentially what we will repeat many times. Given two secrets x and y, we are interested in computing the area under the blue rectangle x times y. Okay, let's look at it with a geometric representation. Then. Uh, what pre-processing phase, offline phase does is to compute the Beaver triplet. It is called Beaver triplet because it's first time used by Beaver in 1991. Uh, it's a triplet ABC such that A and B are picked randomly and C is computed by multiplying A and B. And it's stored, communicated and stored uh, in the online uh, players, online participants. And to compute the value of x times y, what participants do is to open their a minus, the values a minus x and b minus y, which are uh, d and e values now, 
And this helps to compute the x times y because x times y is equal to c, which is the area under the red rectangle here, a times b, minus the Salmon rectangle area b times b and the green rectangle area a times a plus b times e because it was subtracted twice. And this computation can happen locally if we store a beaver triplet and broadcast d and e values. Okay, so this is how speed multiplication works. And in the previous work, to make the six multiplications, the previous work says uh, notices that uh, we need to execute three multiplications in parallel. They can be uh, parallelly computed, they're independent. And for these parallel computations, we can use one round trip time instead of three round trip times. And that makes that gives bring some efficiency. And this can be done with the compiler and MP speed provides such, such, such a parallelism with the uh, uh, round trip times. But unfortunately, this does not change the volume of the data that, which needs to be communicated between participants. So we would like to enable also uh, uh, communication uh, efficiency. Volume of the data, uh, we would like to have as little as possible. For that, we will start with an observation which has made several times. It's not the first time. It's uh, it's the observation that beaver tri tri triplet, so beaver trick can help computing any bilinear function, not just the multiplication. And in GF2 to the 8, x squared times y to the 4 is a bilinear function. And uh, for the well, more importantly, when the y is equal to x, we don't need a triplet. Instead, we need a pair AC such that C is equal to A squared times A to the four because we are computing X squared times uh, X to the four. And instead of opening two values D and E, we can just use one opening A minus X, okay? One uh, value D to compute the multiplication locally in the online phase. And this already has less storage, uh, allows less storage and less communication complexity. But we did more than that because we need three multiplications in parallel. And for these three multiplications, we could use the same random value A with three different C values, C, C prime and C prime prime for uh, where each C corresponds to one multiplication. And by using the one uh, D value, which is opened for one multiplication, we can reuse it for the second and third multiplications as well. And this already allows us to have less communication complexity than the previous work as, uh, as shown in this slide. So in short, in, uh, in the previous work, when implementing the forward S box, it requires three triplets of uh, uh, to be stored per participants. And in the inverse S box, when we tweak the computations in the pre-processing phase, we could use only uh, four values, one quadruplet. And instead of uh, using lots of pairs of data to communicate, we use only one pair of data to be communicated for three multiplications, okay? This is where our optimization uh, efficiency uh, comes from. And the question becomes, why don't we apply the same technique to forward SPOX? Why do, why do we need the inverse SPOX? The reason is that uh, in the forward SPOX computations, the six multiplication or the inverse of a byte uh, operation happens in the middle. And after this uh, inverse, there is, there are two more steps to continue to, co to compute in the forward S box. And therefore, even though we could bring down the complexity uh, being better for the forward S box, it was not enough uh, for us to, uh, to have the same efficiency that we have now, because we still in the forward S box, we still would need to use one more bit decomposition and more computations with the forward uh, affine transformation. As, and in inverse S box, 
uh, we can merge everything. We can prepare a pre-processing data even to even by merging all the necessary uh, backward uh, and linear transformations uh, as well. Okay. So now what happens to the AES? Because we instead of forward SPACs, we uh, propose to implement inverse SPACs. What happens is that we could we have to change the encryption by changing, replacing the forward SPAX with uh, as secure uh, uh, as a forward SPAX uh, um, alternative, which is the inverse SPAX. And we can use uh, the rest of the operations same. It makes an encryption uh, in AES, maybe we call it inverse, inverse AES, uh, different than the standard AES. Or, or we could use the inverse SPAX in the decryption, because in the decryption of one block, anyway, the operations were uh, operations are supposed to be inverted in terms of order and uh, in terms of computation. Uh, uh, so is uh, so is SPAX as well. So we would need an inverse SPAX in the decryption, and therefore, if if uh, someone is not comfortable with uh, using this inverse SPAX in the encryption. The advantage of our technique would come only in the decryption of one block. However, this does not uh, fit well with the counter mode of encryption because, as we said, counter mode of encryption is not inverse free. And uh, to use the counter mode, we really need to replace all the uh, forward S boxes with the inverse, inverse S boxes. And uh, Finally, let me show you the implementation results that we had uh, to compare the, the forward AES with the inverse AES, as we defined, uh, on a standard laptop with uh, two parties com communicating uh, in the local with the local network. network. And uh, we did not implement any multi-trading or uh, use any hardware support to accelerate the computations. It's uh, purely... Uh, uh, as, as it is described, using every, doing everything uh, in a serial manner. And, uh, and uh, we averaged our results over 100 AES runtime. And we obtained a running time which is better than the forward AES uh, more than three times. Uh, communication being better uh, than the forward AES more than two times. And storage being better than the forward AES the more than uh, two times, almost three times better. And this work, the previous work, the uh, Damgard et al, is not the only uh, AES evaluation in MPC. There are other protocols and other implementations in the literature, uh, which I did not involve in this slide. Please uh, look at our paper for more comparisons, even with the comparisons uh, from different MPC models, such as uh, semi-honest MPC implementation of the AES uh, in, in, in our paper. And uh, more uh, sections, some sections even explain more uh, about other techniques and why we didn't consider those techniques in the, in the comparisons. Uh, it is explained in the paper. And thank you very much for uh, your attention and I hope you enjoyed my talk.